comparison. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rashmi Bapar, an esteemed doctor who has graciously agreed to share her insights and experiences with her. With a long experience in medical field, Dr. Rashmi has touched many lives of countless individuals and families through her expertise, compassion, and dedication. We are very proud as Dr. Rashmi is an alumni of her SSPM Day School and Junior College. I, Samriti Gaikwar from Standard 10 and myself, Prano Gaikwar from Standard 10 A warm welcome to Dr. Rashmi and let's have an enlightening conversation with me. Ma'am, what inspired you to become a doctor and pursue a career in medicine? Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me over here. I would really like to uh, dedicate everything to the school itself because uh, our teachers were so inspiring that time and they just got to know exactly what that student needs. I mean, they just uh, studentize the students and they just told them that you are good in this aspect and you can do that. So, uh, my main inspiration is my school and my mother. Actually, she wanted to become uh, something in her life, but she couldn't because of the old days. So that was the reason and uh, she wanted me to be a doctor as in old days like women were not given that chance to uh, work or to study that way. So she was like uh, very happy that uh, I agreed to become a doctor. Like, my mother was the main inspiration and school. And my question to you is, can you share any memory patient story which has had a significant impact on you? Yeah, uh, during COVID time actually. Uh, I'll tell you a very interesting story. I got a phone call from one of the patients at midnight to 30 during COVID time, first COVID I'm talking about. So she told me that she's having asthma and she's going through a lot of symptoms like breathlessness and she's got positive with heavy fever. So I told her to come to my hospital, they get admitted and they When I saw her, she was almost 115 kg heavy fever. And it was so difficult, she had to be put into the ICU. And, uh, but you know, her inspiration is like she was so fat, she was so bulky, and uh, it was so serious to manage her. But the thing was that she had, in, uh, you know, uh, knew that her uh, test baby was going to come. So she was, she wanted that baby to, she wanted her to get uh, birth. So she was so excited in that way that I want to die. I want to see that baby. That thought of hers kept her alive the whole COVID first part. I mean, uh, a day came when we had to shift her to the higher center, like the room where she was shifted. And there I got, got a call from her husband that uh, she's very serious and doctor that told that in a day or two she might get, you know, she may go off. Like, so I was a little bit worried and because I got connected in COVID, we were, okay, all doctors were connected to all the patients. So that time, but then after a year, I got a call from her phone saying that, uh, Dr. Rashmi, this is uh, Vidula. I said, Vidula, how come Vidula would be there? Because uh, what I heard was she was very serious that time, so she wouldn't be there. I was in that room. But then uh, she said, I'm Vidula. I was so shocked. I mean, I, I asked her directly, I mean, okay, okay, fine. So, ma'am, thank you. I just wanted to uh, thank you that after a year you were, you were inspiring me so much to have your baby, to welcome your baby and all. So, you were so happy. This was really a memorable uh, incident for me. So, she is very healthy. Her baby is very nice, almost two, two and a half years old now, right now. So, that was, I mean, we got to learn from her more that she was like, you know, you should be always positive towards anything. If you get positive and if you have a vision, that in all the difficulties, I mean, even health issues, issues and all health difficulties, you know, you can overcome that. So that was one of the, I mean, I cannot forget that thing. And what are the most challenging aspects of being a doctor and how do you cope with those challenges? Well, you cannot say it uh, challenges, but yes, because uh, being female doctor, we have to manage our homes and we have to manage our hospital patients and our personal things, it's like that. So, I got a very good thing from SSPMS that is sports. So, I keep myself uh, very much fit. I keep time for fitness first. That's why I could, you know, cook up with everything. I run from here and there, from home to hospital, to patients. I have my own NGO. So many things I do. So, I think this is the best part. Everyone should also take care about this that you should keep 
put into health. You should have one scope at least. In your opinion, what qualities of a doctor are essential to possess in order to provide excellent patient care? Okay, um, all the doctors now they should be actually uh, they should not be prejudiced. I mean, uh, nowadays it happens that in a busy life, even patients are there. And they come, they, they want immediate results. They come the day, they first initially Google everything about all the all the diseases and they come to us and they just ask us, I want to get cured in a day, I want to join the hospital, office the next day. So this time it becomes very difficult for all the doctors. So I will still, but doctors should not get prejudiced with these things that patient will get cured or they shouldn't give any kind of medicines, any antibiotics. With the, you know, uh, right now busy schedule of all the people with that. So doctors have to take their own time. Even if uh, I don't think that doctor should go with all the busy days, we should take their own time with whatever patients they do, they are coming with. And we should be always truthful to all the patients. We should be always true to all the patients, telling all their considering all their medical health, considering all the background. Because doctors are the why people would always say that uh, you should not hide anything from doctors. So that is How do you see the updated with the latest advancements of the medicine and make sure you give uh, the best possible treatment to your patients? Actually, the, we all, usually attend all the seminars. We update ourselves with the upcoming courses. We do diploma courses with many things. So, on the same day, I have the uh, emergency medicine diploma, I have the psychology diploma, which is like very much necessary these days because people are getting posts just out. So this is the main thing what doctors should actually go for it. So this is the main thing to keep us in the field. Can you share your thoughts on the doctor-patient relationship and the importance of effective communication in healthcare? Exactly. Doctor-patient relationship, what I said right now, that uh, always it has been said that you should not hide anything from doctors. Patients should realize that these things that you should not hide because nowadays what patients have a tendency of going to different doctors if they don't have the, they don't get cured in a day. If, if, if for example you come to me and uh, uh, you say that ma'am I want to join school next day please give me something I have my exams. So uh, I'll give you something which you won't get cured because you are completely in stress, you are studying, you are not sleeping, you are not taking rest. Again, then you go to some other doctor. Ma'am, I have taken this medicine and now I am not getting feeling well yet. And please give me some medicine. She is she also going to give the same thing. Again, so this consistency of patients, wherein patients don't uh, trust in one, you know, full course, they start jump, jump, jumping to doctors to doctors. That shouldn't happen. And also, doctors should understand if a student is there, doctors should always get, I mean, do counseling first. This medicine is going to take this much time, you know, it will take this much time to cure. So, you have to take this for some days like that. And always, obviously, communicator will be there, should be there. Doctor should be available for all the patients. Patients should share all the things when they come to doctor. They should, many a time, they hide many things and then they uh, try that doctor should fetch out things. This should not happen. So patients should be completely open. And also, doctor should be that communicative that to understand all the medicine background and explain everything. And what you would really like to see uh, in terms of medicine and to support as well as doctors and patients? See, uh, uh, as I said previously, even doctors need uh, to be very healthy. So, doctor's life is really very hectic. Uh, male doctors, female doctors, all I mean, they give dedicated full time to the clinics, patients. They are one year and there for patients. They have to go in midnights also. So in this case, I will tell all the doctors also to keep their self healthy, to have some sport, to play, to at least give one hour for themselves, some yoga or something like that so that they keep themselves healthy and so that they can, uh, they can serve people more. And also patients the same thing. Everyone should at least spare one hour for themselves so that they should keep themselves fit. Because nowadays it is very hectic schedules. Everyone is having it. As you said, you want to become a software engineer. You will have a schedule of uh, sitting almost 12 hours in a, in a seat. Right? That time you will start having problems of back ache, 
stress factors, completely your eyes will get stressed. So for that, people should at least uh, spare time one hour for yourself and then for others. Thanks. Dr. Can you share that how do you uh, practice self-care and manage healthy work life while working as a doctor? Same thing, I have answered for almost all the questions, the same answer is there. To be frank, personally, I personally play cricket. I'm a state player, cricket, cricket player. So that's why I, I give time for, for what I love. I love to play cricket. So Sundays I'm completely on ground. So I think that boosts me to work more. I have so many things to do. I, even all the doctors, I think, also teachers, they are very busy in all this uh, schedules. Also students, I tell all of you all that you will have such a huge uh, syllabus coming you know? So also 10 standard students, they are very much pressurized with studies and all. So you should, for concentrating on your studies, for keeping good health, for you know, getting scoring good, this is the this is, uh, second reason, you know, you could score good. You give one hour for yourself, play something, give time to yourself, do yoga, Anything which will keep you fit and happy. Adam. And uh, what advice will you give to the aspiring medical students for considering the career in medicine? Yes, surely. I, uh, I really uh, request any uh, those who are interested in this field. Medical field is really very good. You will get to serve people. You would, uh, everyone will love to be the people who are connected more. People like to be in people more. Those can become good doctors. And you know, it is a very noble profession. There is no selfishness in this. You know, I, I do not become selfish in my profession. There's, I don't have chance also. You know, doctor's profession is that good. You know, every time you talk, always people say that uh, doctors bhagwan hai. As a both hai. You know? So uh, we have you know we have a different kind of respect in the society. We have a different kind of uh, care in the society. People look in a different way. Even we feel happy when we go towards patient, when we cure someone. When when the patient comes after three days for a, for the follow up, they say, "Madam, uh, we are feeling very good now. Uh, uh, we have cured with this." So that satisfaction is different. That right? we have cured them. We are happy because of us because of because of our medicine. If some decisions they have to take in the medical field. So that time when we say them that you don't have to do this, do this, this is the correct way. And then they achieve something good, that time we feel better that feel for the health. Because every individual has a priority about their health, about their living. So we are the reason to make that healthy also and healthy also. So I would request all the future coming doctors that really uh, come here, uh, very noble profession. and. Uh, too many things to do. Science is uh, growing like anything. A lot of scope in this. The last question. How being a Shivaji has helped you in your career? The main role of Shivaji, as I told you, to become a doctor for uh, uh, school has inspired me so much. I mean, school has given me so much. And teachers here, when we were studying in uh, 8, 9, 10 standard, we were focused more. Uh, we were being uh, focused like, you know, every student was focused by teachers. They were knowing, teachers were knowing that this student is good in this, this student is good in that. They were inspiring us in that. And I was being, I really like to uh, share this thing with uh, you all. That uh, Vaishali ma'am was the very inspiring person for me. And she has really changed my uh, career. I was into a lot of sports. I never used to study very frankly, but she focused, she gave me a focus that only sports will not grow you. You have to study with that. I think almost one hour we were sitting together, one and a half hour. She counseled me so nicely. And that day, her counseling, and today, I've been here again in my school, giving an interview, becoming a doctor. So it is really very much that this only shows that what Shivajan has given me. So with this, I would like to thank Ms. Rashmi for such an informative conversation. Hope this conversation may help young Shivajians to uh, take such a noble profession like yours. Uh, with good wishes, best of luck for your future journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.